Hello. Well, as you can see, this week I'm going to be doing a video on Lost Ruins of Arnak. This was the uh, second game um, that I got from my Secret Santa, Board Geek and uh, Secret Santa this year. So I managed to play it uh, yesterday, one game solo, just uh, um, solo as three players. I didn't. S it has a solo mode, but I didn't play that. I played the game solo as three players. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you how to set it up, how to play, and I'll give you, you know, <laughs> my thoughts for what they're worth uh, after just one play. All right. First thing you'll do is uh, place the board. It's a rather large board. In the middle of the table, um, it says for your first few plays to use the side that's got this bird temple of the board. Uh, the flip side of the board has uh, like a snake temple here, and uh, apparently it has um, some minor rules tweaks. It's a more difficult side. I didn't, I haven't played that, so I'm going to be uh, showing the um, standard or beginning set um, suggested side, which is the bird temple side. Alright, you'll shuffle the artifacts deck. All the decks have this same back, so you have to look at the front. The artifacts have this symbol and kind of a bluish border, so you'll shuffle that deck. And you'll place it at the top of the board in this space that's got the matching symbol. You'll take the fear deck, um, which they all have this same face, and like I said, all the backs on all the decks are the same. So you take the fear deck and place it here at the top of the board where you see the matching face there. That'll be your fear deck. You'll shuffle your items deck. The items have this symbol, like a trowel. Um, shuffle up that deck. And you will place it face down up here at the top of the board where the matching trowel symbol is. So you'll have your Artifact deck face down, fear card face up, fear deck face up, and item deck face down. Next, you'll take the moon staff and place it under round one of the moon track there. Then you'll deal one artifact card to the left of the moon staff. And you'll deal five item cards to the right of the moon staff. Oops. All right, there we go. Next, you'll mix up these idle tiles, and each uh, of these level one sites, um, that's these here, will get one face up. like so. So all eight of these level one sites on the board will have one face up idle and then each of these level two you can tell that's a two that's a one. Actually they're like keyholes but there's one keyhole here and two here so that's level two. Anyway uh, each of these four level two sites will get one face up and one face down and you can kind of see that here so get one face up one face down face up, face down. So that's it for the level two sites. Next you may block off some of these um, action spaces. In a four player game you won't block off any of these. In a three player game, which I'm going to play, you'll mix up these blocking tokens and turn over three of them and you'll block off the uh, two boot space on the corresponding uh, area. So look for the ones with the compass that's here and we'll turn over this one and arrow hit. So those spaces will be unavailable in this game. Then these tokens just go back in the box. And actually you can turn these back to this ocean wave or whatever it is uh, once you got the selection in a two player game you block all 
five of these uh, two boot um, sections, action spaces. Then you'll put temple tiles up here on the temple space. Each stack of temple tiles will have the number of players in the game. So the top 11 point stack will have, I'm playing a three player game, so you'll put uh, three of those. Then you got your uh, six point tiles, so you'll put two stacks of three, like so. And then your two-point temple tiles, you'll put three stacks, each with three, or each with the number of players in the game. But again, for me, playing a three-player game, each stack will have three tiles in it. Like so. All right, next you'll place your research bonus tiles. You'll mix those up. First, you'll make a stack with the number of players on a three-player game three players and put them on this space here then you'll put one on each of these other spaces on the research track but you'll only put one here in a three plus player game and you'll only put one here in a four player game so um, you put these face up I'm playing three players so I would have one there the ones without a number just always get one and initially, you, it says to place them uh, face down. Now, these stay face down, but the ones on the research track, it says initially place them face down, and then once they're all face down, turn them face up. But since I was just grabbing them randomly, I just put them face up, top to bottom. But officially, put them face down, and then once they're all uh, on the track, turn them face up. Next you unfold your supply board and place it uh, on the bottom of the main board. Then you place the matching resources on the pictured area so like you know, all your tablet uh, tiles will go here. Your arrowheads will go here. Your gems will go here. Your coins will go here. Your compass is here. You'll get your level one tiles. I got the one keyhole there. I think that's a keyhole anyway. Anyway, you'll shuffle those up and put them on the level one space of the board. You'll take your guardian tiles. They have like little creatures and stuff on them. Shuffle those up. Place them on your guardian space of the board. And finally, take your level two tiles. I got like the two... I don't know, maybe they're not keyholes, maybe they're just carvings, I don't know, whatever. Anyway, those are your level two. They look like a keyhole to me, but I guess maybe they're just carvings. Anyway, put those on your level two spot of the board. Take your assistant tiles, shuffle them up, turn, turn them to the silver side. They've got a silver and a gold side. Turn them to the silver side, shuffle them up, and place them in three stacks of four here on the board. Like so. So you got three stacks of four tiles each. Next, each player should take a cut, choose a color, and take the player board of that color. Take the two research tokens of that color. Take the two archaeologist figures of that color. And take the four basic uh, cards of that color. All right, so I've got that for my green, green player and my red player also. You'll take your research tokens and put them on the bottom space of the research track here with the book on the bottom and the magnifying glass on top. And so I've done that for each player here. 
each player will take their four starting basic cards and then two fear cards. Uh, shuffle those up and place them on the left hand section, the draw card section of your player board. Alright, so I've done that for my green and red player also, so that gives each deck six cards, your four basic cards, and the two fear cards. The starting player is the person who's most recently traveled to a place they've never been before. Um, since I'm the same person for all players, I'm just going to make my blue player the starting player, so he gets the starting player token. So the first player starts with two... Uh, coins, two gold coins as his starting resources. Player two going clockwise um, starts with one coin and one compass as their starting resources. And the third player gets one compass and two coins as their starting resource. If you had four players they would get uh, one coin and two compasses as their starting resource. And that's it. Setup is complete. Got the board all set up. All the players set up. So let's uh, get with how you play the game. Actually, I didn't see it mentioned in the rules, but each player can take one of these uh, turn uh, sheets, tell you what you can do on your turn, and has what the iconography is so I didn't see that in the rules but they are included so you can give each player one of those alright so how do you play the game well the game is played over rounds there'll be a total of five rounds as can be seen by the waxing moon uh, track there so each round you'll move the moon staff and finally after the end of the fifth round then you'll get to the final scoring so each round at the beginning of the round, all players will draw five cards into their hand. Of course, uh, normally your hand would be, you know, <laughs> kept secret from the other players, but uh, playing solo, my hands will be displayed for all to see. All right, so my other players have draw, drawn their hands of five cards. Next, starting with the first player, the players will take turns where they can perform one main action and any number of free actions. And the free actions are denoted by this lightning bolt symbol. So playing this card uh, for the action of getting a compass, since it's got the lightning bolt, that's a free action that would not count as your main action. So again, on your turn you can perform one main action and those main actions as we can see here are dig at a site, discover a new site, overcome a guardian, buy an item, buy an artifact, play a card, research or pass and then any number of free actions. So let's go what each of let's go over what each of the main actions are. All right, well, you'll see one of the actions, main actions you can take is dig at a site. So at the beginning of the game, there's just these five sites available that you can dig at. So to dig at a site, you have to pay the travel cost of the action space that you're going to. So if you're going to this space, it costs one boot. And these travel costs can be paid with icons at the top of your cards. So... If you wanted to travel to this site, you could play a card for its travel cost um, of one boot and then place your archaeologist on that space. Then that leaves this space still available if someone else wants to come here, but that cost is now two boots for somebody to place an archaeologist there. And when you play a card for its travel value or its travel cost, then you don't get to use the effect. Now a fear card is just a negative one point in scoring at the end when you're doing scoring, but if you were playing this card for its travel cost, then you don't get to get the effect as if you played it for its uh, card value. 
Anyway, as I said, once you pay the travel cost and move your archaeologist there, you get to activate the site and get whatever the effect. So in this case, you would get two gold coins and put it on your player board. The effect here would you'd get two compasses, here you would get two tablets, here you'd get one arrowhead, um, here you would get to play a card into your play area, so in other words, kind of just put it into your play area without getting any effect from it, and then you get to get one gem. Now later in the game, some of these other um, sites will be discovered, and then you'll be able to dig at these sites uh, also, which we'll talk about when we get to the Discover a New Site, which is next. Well, before that, we should talk about uh, one more thing about travel costs. So, as I mentioned, like to pay for the boot, you would uh, spend one boot uh, card to move there, or to pay for two boots, you would, could spend two different cards with one boot, or you could spend one card if it had two uh, boot icons. But uh, you can always pay for, um, you'll see some of the other cards have a jeep uh, or a boat. So you can always substitute a jeep or a boat icon for a boot. Um, and you can always substitute a plane icon for anything, either a jeep, a boat, or a boot. But you can't substitute a jeep for a boat, and you can't substitute a boat for a jeep. Um, you can also always pay two coins, and that acts as a as if you had played a plane card, um, hire a pilot. So you can always pay two coins to travel, um, to count as one travel icon. And of course, if I didn't mention it, mention it earlier, you can't move to a space that's occupied. So if one archaeologist is already on this one boot space. Another player can come to this two boot space, but he has to pay, you know, the two boot cost, and then nobody else could come there. Here, there's only one space available, so only one player could um, come to this site because this blocking tile we put at the beginning of the game blocks the uh, other action space. All right. The next uh, main action you can do is discover a new site. So that's one of these level 1 or level 2 sites up here. So when you discover a new site, first you have to pay, uh, if you're going to discover a level 1 site, you got to be able to pay the cost of three compasses. So you'd have to be able, you know, if you, you need to have three compass tokens. You have to pay that. And then you also have to pay the travel cost to get to whichever site you're going to. So the three compasses and, you know, play a card to pay the travel cost to which site you're going to. If you decide to go to a level two site, you got to pay a cost of six compasses and the, the cost to travel um, to one of these level two sites. And as you can see, that's a little more. It's either two boats or two jeeps. But um, once you pay the cost, you then uh, put your archaeologist on that site. You get to collect the idle um, tile, and you immediately get that reward. Uh, the reward on this idle tile is, you know, you can refresh one of your assistants if you already ha have one and, and have used it. Otherwise, that little benefit doesn't really do you any good. But once you collect that idol, you take it, flip it over, and uh, put it face down on your player board, and that'll be worth points at the end. Plus, has another uh, use, which we'll talk about later. Now, if you collect, uh, if you discover one of these level two sites, one of them's face up and one of them's face down. So you only get to collect the bonus off of the one that's face up. You get both uh, idle tiles uh, or tokens, but you only get the bonus of the one that's face up. The other one just goes to your uh, player board face down. Uh, you don't get any bonus from that. So if you came here, paid your three compasses plus your one jeep, collected your idol, got its bonus, put it on, a shirt, on your board. Then you draw the top 
um, level one sight tile and put it on the board there then you immediately get to activate it and get uh, you know what is ever here so you could take two compasses or buy one uh, item card well actually at no or you get to get one item card from up here at no cost with that effect so your choice either two compass tokens or you get to get an item card at no cost then after you've done that you draw a guardian tile and place it on top of the site and that guardian has no immediate effect um, on you but um, at the end of the round when you'll be taking back your archaeologist if you take an archaeologist back from a site that still has a guardian on it then you also have to draw one fear card now later in a future round this is now a site that's available um, to take a dig at uh, site action so not only can you dig at one of these sites once a new site has been discovered um, then that's available um, to dig at the site um, and you don't have to pay the compass cost at that point but you do still have to pay the travel cost and then when you move there you just activate and get whatever is there um, if there is a guardian there, again, there won't be any effect on you at that time, but at the end of the round, if that guardian is still there, then when you take your archaeologist back, you'll have to draw a fear card. But, now that uh, brings us into the next main action you can do, which is overcome a guardian on your site. So, as your main action another one you can do is overcome a guardian and in that case all you have to do is pay the cost shown on the guardian so here it would cost uh, well of course you have to have your archaeologist there so he would have to have come there to dig or um, have discovered the new site um, but then as, as main action you can overcome the guardian by paying the cost um, here two coins and an arrowhead if you do overcome it you take that and put it in your area it has a what's called the boon that you can use at any time so in other words you could use this one to pay the travel cost of a jeep um, at some point and whenever you use that boon you just flip it over and at the end of the game, that guardian will be worth five points to you. Now, if you never use the boon, it's still going to be worth five points to you at the end of the game. But you only get to use the boon once. So once used, you flip it over. All right. Another main action you can do on your turn is buy an item. At the beginning of the game, there's five item cards available to buy them. You just pay the cost shown here at the bottom two coins four coins three coins um, when you buy the item you take the item card and put it underneath your uh, deck that's still on your player board so you know if you bought this one um, you would just put it underneath your deck there and so when you draw cards at the beginning of the next round you know that's likely going to be one of the cards you uh, draw unless you've gotten a pretty big deck and then it may not be but when you buy one you do that then you refill the card row by just grabbing another one if you bought one from up here you would slide these down and then put the new one you know on the left hand side but as the rounds prog progress you'll have more artifact cards and less um, item cards and that brings us to the buy an artifact main action you can do. Beginning of the game, there's only one artifact available. Um, when you buy it, you pay the cost down here. That would be four compasses. The difference with the artifact is when you buy it, you can immediately use its effect for free. <clears throat> so this one is you can exile one card <clears throat> from your hand or play area and uh, when you exile a card that's you're just putting it uh, if you're going to exile an artifact you put it here if you're going to exile an item you put it here if you're going to exile a, 
uh, fear card you just put it back on the fear card stack if you're going to exile one of your uh, base cards you just put it well i don't have any room it's, it shows in the manual up above the fear deck but you just discard it anywhere it's out of the game basically then if you've whether you use the effect or not um, immediately after buying it then the artifact card goes into your play area with your other played cards that you've played that round it doesn't go into your hand it goes into your play area with other cards that you've already um, played that turn which is different from the item card which goes you don't get to do anything with it when you first buy it it just goes at, to the bottom of your draw deck and in a future turn if you draw this card um, you have to pay one tablet in order to get its effect you only get the effect free uh, immediately after you buy it then you would draw a new uh, artifact card and place it here again as the rounds go on this moon staff will move and so you'll have uh, more artifact cards and less item cards all right the next uh, main action you can do is play a card now most of the cards you have at the beginning of the game uh, are free actions they have the lightning bolt so you can play that you know as many of these as you want play that get a coin play that get a coin play that get a compass play that get a compass none none of those would count as your main action because they're all free actions but later as you buy cards um, you know items cards have uh, an effect for instance this one as you get a coin and draw a card from the bottom of your deck into your hand um, you know we saw uh, artifact card um, it later if you're playing that from your hand you'd pay a tablet and get to take the action you know so some of these this one you'd get to draw two cards from your deck into your hand exile a card and get a compass so some of these cards that you end up buying will have actions that don't have a lightning bolt so that would be your main action that turn would be to play that card again any free actions you take uh, you can do as many of those as you want either before your main action after your main action you know whenever but you can only take one main action so if you're playing a card that doesn't have a lightning bolt that's your main action for that turn the fear cards have no main action again they're mostly a detriment to you because at the end of the game for each one you have they'll be worth worth minus one point but they do have a little bit of value in that they give you a, a one boot to use as a travel cost and again any cards you play go into you know just go face up into your play area um, cards you haven't played remain in your hand and like I talked about, when you buy a uh, artifact card, it just goes into your play area with any cards you have played so far. All right, next main action you can do is research. So when you research, you're going to pay, you know, you've got your magnifying glass and your book here on the research track whenever you are going to research you pay the cost listed above um, which space you're going to move into now at the beginning you can move to either one of these spaces so you could either pay a compass and an arrowhead to move here or a jewel to move here your book token can never move ahead of your magnifying glass token so you always uh, you know when you're starting out your first research you always have to move your magnifying glass token first when you've paid the cost um, so if you paid if you decided to go this way and paid the compass and arrowhead you move your magnifying glass token there and then you get the reward shown under the magnifying glass shape here so you would get one uh, coin and at the end of the game you know 
these points will will be rewarded to awarded to you depending on how far along you've gotten on the track so if you only got this far it'd be worth one point to you but as you go up the track you can only go up um, to spaces above the space you're on so this one if you if you went here you can see because it's adjacent to this space and this space the next time you take a research action you could go either way but if you decided to go um, here first then the next time you take a research action you could only go up to this space you wouldn't have the option of going to this space because it's not adjacent to it now that the next time you take another research a action you could um, you know decide to pay a jewel and move your magnifying glass here or you could use your book and move it here and get the reward shown here which it allows you to get an assistant which we'll talk about in a minute so again your book can always be at the same spot on the research track as your magnifying glass but it can never move ahead of it the magnifying glass always has to move ahead of the book and they say that's to show that you're researching and then writing down in the book your findings um, if you move into a space that has a tile if you're the first one to move into that space then you take it and get whatever bonus it shows um, on it for instance this one lets you uh, change a tablet that you if you have a tablet on your player board you can change a tablet to either an arrowhead or a gem once this is used you just discard it it's out of the game and then you of course you get the reward depending on what you moved if you moved your magnifying glass you'd get the compass if you moved your book you'd get another assistant so let's talk about the assistance real quick when you move your book um, to one of these spaces you can get an assistant so you can choose one of the available top assistants in one of the three piles um, so whichever is visible you know once somebody takes one there'll be another one visible you can't dig underneath what's on top and look for a different one you have to take one of the top choices but once you get it you put it on your one of your assistant slots on your board and most of them are a free action so to use this assistance you can use it uh, it's a free action so at any time on your turn you just turn it and you would get a tablet you would get to take a tablet now normally you can't use it again until at the end of the round when your assistants are refreshed and then at the you know during the next round you'll be able to use that again whenever you want to um, there's some other effects that let you uh, refresh an assistant like uh, we saw earlier um, I think it was a card or something um, so that would let you to do that now you will later up the research track when you get here you'll see this symbol when you move your book here it lets you upgrade your assistant and then you get to flip it over and it just gives you a little bit better reward and the silver side um, does show you what's going to be on the upgraded side down here um, if you're if you had used your assistant and you do a research action with and it's going to allow you to upgrade not only do you get to flip it over but you get to flip it over refresh so you could use it again immediately if you want to so you'll be able to get up to a maximum of two assistants from researching and when you move your book to this level you'll get one and when you move your book to this level you'll get one when you move your book to this level you can upgrade one and when you move your book to this level you'll be able to upgrade another one if you manage to get your magnifying glass all the way up to this space on the research track um, you get to go on the furthest left space available so the first person to get there would get to put their magnifying glass there and that'll be worth 23 points at the end of the game they also get to grab this stack of um, tiles and look at it and choose one they want and put the rest back so there'll always be one bonus tile for each player that uh, reaches the lost temple here then after you've gotten here if you take uh, any other research actions you can take these uh, tiles uh, temple tiles depending on what you want to pay so you could pay um, 
this cost a coin and two tablets to take this one one of these two point temple tiles you could pay a jewel to take one of these two point temple tiles or you could take pay a compass and an arrowhead to take one of these two point temple tiles if you want to take one of these six point temple tiles you either have to pay both these costs you know a gold and two tablets and a jewel then you could get one of these or if you want to get one of these you pay a, a jewel and a compass and an arrowhead and finally if you want to get one of the 11 point tiles you have to pay all three of these costs so that covers research and the final main action you can do on your turn is pass so when you take the action of the main action of pass you can still take any number of free actions um, on that turn that you want to take but if your main action is pass then any f any future turns um, you're you're skipped over for that round so when you take the main action pass you can still take any free actions but that's it no other main actions then the other players after that continue taking turns until they've all passed once everybody's passed then that will end the round when the round ends you'll return any of your archaeologists that are on uh, sites on the board remember if they're on a site that has a guardian you uh, also get a fear card and put it into your play area um, once you've done that you shuffle all the cards in your play area and put them at the bottom of your draw deck so you don't shuffle your draw deck in with uh, the cards you've played you shuffle up the cards you've played and then put them at the bottom of your draw deck you then refresh any assistance that you've used you then exile the two cards that are on the left and right of the uh, moon staff so you would after the first round you would discard exile this card item card into this pile exile this um, artifact card then you advance the staff and then you'd refill the card row so you draw two new artifacts and put them here so again each round you have less item cards and more artifact cards you then pass the starting player marker to the next player in clockwise order and draw a new hand of five cards you know up to five draw a new hand up to five cards if you'd kept any cards in your hand from the previous round um, you would only draw back to five now I wanted to get back to a couple things I didn't mention um, and you get these idols remember I said when you um, discover a site you get to take the idol you know if, as I mentioned if it's face up you get to get the whatever bonus is on it that was the one that lets you refresh your assistant um, then you flip it over and put it on your board now at the end of the game that's going to be worth three points to you you'll also collect these points at the end of the game for a total of ten points but um, at any point on your turn you can take one of your idols and place it over one of these spots and collect one of these bonuses so if you said oh I, I really need an arrowhead for what I'm gonna do you can take your tile your idol tile put it there get an arrowhead but at the end of the game you won't get that one point so that's not too much of a big deal but as the more you use more idols and cover up more of these spots that's less of these bonus points you'll get you still get the three points for your idol even if it's on one of these um, free action spaces that lets you take one of these bonuses but you know if you've covered this one this one and this one then that's six points you're losing at the end of the game um, if you've covered all of them that's ten points you're losing at the end of the game but anyway that is a way you can get one of these bonuses is by taking one of your idle tiles covering up that spot and selecting one of these bonuses here and those are free actions as you can see by the lightning bolt so that uh, doesn't count as a main action and can be used at any point on your turn so that's it um, then at the end of round five 
the only thing you'll do is take back any archaeologist you have on the board and if, you, if there's a guardian where you have one you have to get the fear card and then you'll do final scoring and there's a score pad um, to use for that and we'll just go over how that works so first each of your research tokens will score points depending on how far they made it up the research track so your magnifying glass if it was in this spot would be worth nine points and your books down here it would be worth two points so that would be eleven points and you'd write that down here for each player then for each of your temple tiles if you've managed to collect any of those you put the total of those for each player then as I mentioned each of your idols is worth three points even if it's in a slot then you also add up any uncovered slots that you have and total those points and uh, put the total here each guardian that you overcame and that you have in your play area will be worth five points and you'll put the total in that slot then uh, these uh, item cards and artifact cards that you've bought so all the item cards and artifacts that you have in your play area and in your hand you total those you know so that's worth three that's worth one that's worth one and put those totals here then each fear card you have in your hand or play area you have to subtract one point put negative point for each one there and finally you get your total and whoever has the most points wins the game if there's a tie for more, most points then it's whoever reached the lost temple first would win amongst the tied players if that's um, if nobody reached the lost temple then it would just who got higher up on the research track amongst the tied players would be the winner so that's uh, pretty much it uh, that's how you play that's the rules for how you play so uh, why don't we go through a few example turns and just show you how it works all right uh, reset everything I think I reset everything back up to how it was when we did the setup. Uh, Blue is first player. It's his turn. So he gets one, ma one main action and then uh, any number of free actions. So this is his hand. Alright, we'll just say he's going to get a compass. So he gets a compass. That's a free action, so he still has... any. We'll say he's going to get a gold, so it gets gold. Um, say he's going to get another compass, so he gets a compass. The only thing he had left in his hand is a couple of fear cards, so those were all free actions because they had the lightning bolt, so he still hasn't done his main action. So we'll say he's going to use a uh, fear card for its uh, boot for a travel action and he's gonna dig at a site and we'll say he's gonna move here that costs one boot that's what we played that allows him to get two tablets alright so he's done his one main action so he can't do any more main actions he doesn't really have uh, any more free actions he can do so uh, he's gonna end his turn there so these are the cards in his play area, and then this is the one card he has left in his hand. All right, so now we go to the next player. That's red. This is his hand of cards. Um, and I think, I'm trying to see if maybe we want to do something different with him. Uh, let's have him, he's going to play a, his fear card. For the boot for a travel uh, for a dig um, dig at a side action so he's gonna move here and he's gonna get an arrowhead put that in his resources um, that's his main action but he can still do as many free actions as he wants and he's gonna go ahead and do all these free actions so he's gonna get two compasses and two gold two compasses and two coins and that is going to be the end of his turn all right so we go on to green's turn and let's see 
what he wants to do. Um, of course, he'll probably do his free action of getting a coin. He'll do a free action of getting a compass. And... Well, I guess he's going to... What has he got? Three coins? Uh, just to show something different, we'll do... He's going to do his main action is to purchase uh, a card. He's going to buy an item card. So uh, he's going to buy this journal card that costs three gold. So he puts that in there. He's going to take this journal card. And we'll just see what that does. Exile this card to research with your token for free. But anyway, he can't do anything with it now. But it goes underneath his uh, draw pile. Alright, so that's his main action. He still could do another free action, so he'll go ahead and do this and get another gold. And that is pretty much uh, all he can do. And that's going to um, come back to the blue player. Alright, well blue just has this one card, so he's going to take a, uh, a dig at a sight action. He's still got one archaeologist, and he's going to play one boot to travel uh, here and get these two compass tokens. He doesn't have any free actions he can do. Um, that was his main action, so he's done. Alright, so we come back to red. Um, he doesn't have any cards in his hand. Um, oh, you know, what we forgot to do after uh, Green bought that card, we should have uh, refilled the card row. Um, so, anyway, I've done that. All right, we're back to red. reason made me think of that is because I think <coughs> for his action... No, we'll, we'll say for his action, he's going to do a research action. So, uh, he can do... He doesn't have a gem, so he can't research here, but he does have a compass and an arrowhead. So he's going to spin those, and then he uh, will move his magnifying glass into this spot. Remember, you always have to move your magnifying glass before your book. Um, anyway, that gives him a re reward of one coin. And that's his main action. Um, he doesn't have any uh, free actions he can do, so that's going to end his turn. Alright, that brings us back to green. He's got a couple of fear cards in his hand. There's still one spot, no, two spots that uh, can be uh, dug at. Um, he could buy, yeah, he could buy another card. There is one up here that only costs one coin. But we'll say he's going to... Uh, use a fear card to dig at a site he's going to send an archaeologist here and that lets him uh, play a card which he has one remaining into his play area and then he gets a gem for doing that so he's going to take a gem put it in his play area and that's all he's going to do on his turn all right so we're back to blue he doesn't have any cards in his hand those are all all in his play area um, he's got no archaeologists left, um, so maybe he wants to buy a card. So, um, I'll just say he'll spend two coins, and he's going to buy this axe item. He's going to, so he's buying an item. Um, when he uses that, it lets him exile a card and get a compass. But he can't do anything with it now. It just goes into his draw pile, at the bottom of his draw pile. So that's his main action, buy a card. He doesn't have anything to do a free action. So that's his turn. We come back to Red. Red has no cards in his hand. He does have some coins and a couple of compasses. Oh, again, after Blue uh, bought that card, we forgot to refill the item stack. I keep uh, forgetting about that. Um, but uh, we'll say Red wants to go ahead and buy a card. He's got four coins, so he's going to spend four, and he'll buy this pack 
donkey for four. And uh, when he uses that, it lets him draw two cards from his deck. So he's going to stick that under his draw pile. Now we refresh the item area. Um, that is all red can do. That's his main action was to buy an item. So now we go on to green. All right. We are back to green. Again, he has no cards in his hand. Those are all in his play area. He's got one coin. He could still buy a card with that. Um, he could buy an item card. There's one that's one coin. And actually, there's another one that's one coin. Um... And he's got two compasses. Not really anything he can do with that. He does have a gem, so I think uh, Green's going to do a research action. So he's going to go here. That cost one gem. So he's going to do a research action. And uh, he'll get a one coin reward for that. That's his main action. Uh, he doesn't have anything to do any free actions, so that's going to be it for him. We come back to Blue. Uh, Blue has four compasses. I think he's going to um, buy an artifact so we can show that. So he's got four compasses. The one artifact that's available costs four compasses, so he's going to spend those. He's going to get that artifact. Now he gets to do this immediately. So he gets to exile a card, and you can do that from a card that's in your hand or in your play area. So he's going to exile a fear card. And when you do that, you just put it back on the fear deck. And he gets an arrowhead. So remember, when you acquire a, um, an artifact, you get to do that effect immediately, and then it just goes into your play area. Anytime in the future when you draw this card and you're going to play it, you have to pay a tablet to actually do that effect. Um, so then we refill the artifact. I didn't forget. And that's going to be it for blue. I mean, he did his one main action, which was buy an artifact. So now we're back to red. Red, I think, doesn't really have anything that he can do. He's got no money. He's got two compasses, but the artifact that's for sale is three compasses. Um, he's got one archaeologist left, but he doesn't have any cards to pay a travel cost. Uh, he can't really research, so for his main action, he's going to pass this time. So now he's out. If he had some free actions, he could do that still, even though he passed, but... Uh, um, this this turn, but then the future, his turn is skipped. But anyway, he passes. He's done for this round. We come back to green. Green could buy a card, um, an item card, um, but I don't think he's going to. I think he's going to go ahead and pass for this round also, which brings us back to blue, and he can't really do much of anything, so he's going to pass also. So, all right, all three players have passed, so that brings us to the end of the round. So, first thing you do is all players return their archaeologists. If they were on a site that had a guardian, of course, they'd get a fear card. Uh, green takes his back. Red takes his back. Um, if you had any assistance now, you would refresh them, but no, nobody has any. Um, now we... Uh, exile the two cards on either side of the moon staff. So we'll take those and exile them. Then we move the moon staff and now we'll refresh the artifact row. There won't be anything refreshed uh, over here in the item row. Alright, now all players will shuffle all the cards in their uh, play area. Shuffle them up and then they'll put them at the bottom of their draw stack. So let me do that. Alright, so all players have shuffled up their uh, cards that were in their play area and put them at the bottom of their draw deck. Now, so we start a no new round. The first player marker goes to the next player in clockwise order, and everybody draws up to five cards. 
I'm going to show a few more examples because I want to show a couple things we didn't do, like uh, discovering a new site. I think that's the only thing we didn't show. So um, let me go ahead and have everybody draw their five cards. All right, everybody's drawn their hand back up to five cards. Uh, red player has the first player marker, so he's first. So we will have him... Uh, we'll say for his action, he's going to, uh, for his main action, he's going to play this card. So that lets him draw two cards into his hand. So he gets to draw. So during the round, as you can see, you can have more than five cards in your hand. It's only when you start a new round, um, you can only have five cards in your hand so anyway he's got a little more than five right now um, he could still do some free actions he's done his main action he's gonna do some free actions he's gonna discard this and this remember they have the lightning bolts so that's free action so that's gonna give him two compasses and I think that's all he's gonna do this turn alright green's turn this is his hand um, he could play this card for his turn, play a card, exile this card to research with your book token for free. Um, well, he might save that for later, so he's going to go ahead and play that for a free action, get a compass, and then We'll say he is going to dig at a site. So he's gonna he's gonna play this card for its travel. He's gonna he's gonna dig here. So he's got to pay this for his travel cost. So he's gonna play that jeep. And then remember, um, since he's digging at a level one site, he's got to spend three compasses. Or not digging. He's discovering a new site. Sorry. He's doing uh, discover a new site. So he's paid his three compasses. He's traveled here. He gets this token. He gets the bonus, which is a compass. Then he just flips that over, puts it on his board. He's getting his compass that was that bonus. And now he's got to flip over the top level one site tile. And he gets whatever. He activates that. That gives him a coin and two tablets. So he's getting a coin. And two tablets and now he's got to draw a guardian put it on top of that site and nothing happens now but at the end of the round when he takes his archaeologist back if this guardian is still still here he has to draw a fear card into his play area um, so that was his main action was discover a new site he could still do any free actions he has but he doesn't have any so that's going to end his turn well he does have possible free action he could put this idol here and get one of these items if he wanted to but at this point he doesn't think he needs to do that so he's done all right we're back to blue's turn this is his hand of cards um we'll just say he is going to I'm going to do that for a free action. Get a coin. He'll do this one for a free action. Get a compass. Uh, let's see. He doesn't really have enough compasses. He's going to do this one for another free action to get another compass. And then I think he's just going to do a research action. So. Uh, he's going to do this one. It's going to cost him a, an arrowhead and a compass. So he's going to do a research, and that gives him a coin. And that's all he's going to do. Uh, he's still got these two cards in his hand. And we'll come back to red, and we'll say, we'll say maybe red wants to discover a site. So. Um, he's going to play this card for its boat, and he's going to send his archaeologist here, where there's a boat travel cost, 
Now, remember, he's got to pay his three compasses for discovering a site there, which he has. So he's going to pay those. He picks up this, uh, which gives him a tablet. Put that in his area. Then he just flips this over, puts it here. Now he's got to draw a level one site tile. He does that. He gets to activate that. He gets a coin and an arrowhead. So he'll take those, put them in his area. Now he has to draw a guardian tile. And he'll put that. Again, no immediate effect, but when he takes his archaeologist back at the end of the round, if that's still there, he'll have to draw a fear card. Okay, I think the only action we haven't shown um, of the main actions is overcome a guardian. So it's Green's turn. To overcome this guardian, he needs a, a jeep travel uh, icon and an arrowhead. Well, he's got the jeep here. But he doesn't have an arrowhead. But what he can do, for a free action, he can move his idol into this slot and get one of these. So he's going to get an arrowhead. So he's going to get that. And then for his main action, remember that's a free action. For his main action, he's going to overcome a guardian. So he's going to pay the jeep and the arrowhead. So he's going to spend the jeep there and the arrowhead. And that is all is required to overcome this guardian. And that will give him a boon that he can use uh, in the future of a uh, boat travel token. And it will be worth five points uh, at the end of the game. So that was his main action to overcome a guardian. He doesn't have any other free actions, so that's going to end his turn. And then it would go back to blue. But I think we've pretty much uh, shown every type of main action now think uh, as far as i can think so that should give you a pretty good idea of how the game plays um so just a few thoughts of course i've only played it once and i played it solo so i don't have a any kind of good idea of what's a good strategy i mean when i played i got <laughs> terrible scores i think one of my uh, three players got 30 points, one got 40, and one got 44. So I'm pretty sure that's not good at all. I didn't get uh, hardly anywhere up the research track. I think that's probably something you want to do because that seems worth a lot of points, getting up the research track and uh, maybe discovering some more sites. Um, but anyway, uh, with one play, I can't give a, a whole lot of insight into it, but... Um, it did seem it did seem fun I don't know that I was as blown away as um, you know all the reviewers that I've seen talk about it but again they've played with uh, other players and not not played it solo <laughs> so um, or solo as um, you know three players like I said there is a solo mode but I haven't tried that anyway I, I enjoyed it. Um, wasn't blown away by it, but again, I think if I can play, this is definitely not something I could play with my wife and daughter. They would just say it's too much going on, I think. So I'll have to wait until I can play with uh, some of the guys that enjoy playing, you know, some more, more than just a family game. I think this is a little heavier than a family game. Anyway, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Uh, this will be my last video probably through the end of the holidays. So I hope you all have a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays for whatever you celebrate. And again, thanks for watching.